Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, 1989 Mall Crawler. Today I'm going to go, I'm going to make a real short video about my installation of annular boosters on my Holly 390 HP double pumper. Um, the list is 80507. Bought the kit from Allstate Carburetor. Uh, I've dealt with them a few times. They're the ones that helped me out when I bought the carb. It had, um, uh, had holes in the throttle body, or sorry, <laughs> hope not. Well, maybe. Anyways, I uh, had holes in the throttle blade because it's made for NASCAR, uh, whatever engines, which have, you know, big cams and this, that, and the other. Called up Allstate and they knew exactly what part number I needed for the throttle blades. So they helped me out there. I called them for annular boosters and they had this kit and that helped me out. Anyways, they're really good guys to talk to. A really good company to deal with. So I'll go over real quick what an annular booster is. A lot of you guys probably already know, but Whatever, in case you don't, here's booster styles. Number one is a straight leg. It's straight, right? That's what most Hollies and stuff come with. And it goes, uh, it's basically the, the inner pipe, air and fuel em emulsion goes through and then sprays down the bottom into the, uh, into the carb, right? Uh, number two and three are down leg. They have their own specific uses. Cams with big ov overlap. Um, if I remember correctly, they help with signal. Uh, I can't do those on a 390 because they're so small. Not they're, they're so small, but the 390 is so small. And then four and five are annular, and it's hard to see in 2D. But basically, the air and fuel emulsion goes through the, the tube, right? And then it hits all these little holes around it versus the number one, which is just basically a, a big oblong opening. So I try to show that in using my little fogger. So here's a normal booster, the normal straight leg that comes on most Hollies and other, other carbs. So it's just big clumps of fog, basically. Um, does its job. It's cheap to, to produce, you know, been around a long time. And it, it is what it is. And then here's the annular. You can see the difference instead of just clumps of fog, so to speak, if that makes sense, comes out. It's all in a bunch of little holes. All right, so hopefully you get the idea now of the, the point of the annular booster. Now you can see also it's way more complicated of a design. <laughs> so what an annular booster is supposed to do is have better atomization, better throttle response, which is what Edelbrock AVS2 carburetor actually switched to. And that's the annular booster to, to get that quote unquote EFI feel. And also maybe increase power in the, the lower RPMs, uh, more torque in the lower RPMs. I, they're not a band aid. If you have a crappy intake, you have a crappy intake. Um, in fact, when I pulled the plugs on the horseshoe intake in my, pr in my, uh, previous video that I put out last week, I'll put that link below in case you're interested. Um, in. I just didn't make this video yet, but these were already in. I noticed a little bit of idle uh, better and maybe a little bit more touchy, you know, um, uh, I wouldn't say more power, but uh, better throttle response. There you go. Better throttle response. But it was still a crappy intake. Um, it was EFI intake. It was, I just wanted to see how it'd do. It was experimental. But these are not a band-aid to fix things. What they do is they will make a good situation better, so to speak. All right, the drawback of them is you see the size here, very evident, they take up a lot of room, which, you know, it's kind of interesting. So you get better throttle response. I suppose it'd be because of the better atomization, but <laughs> probably also because you're restricting the intake a little bit, um, the, the, the flow a little bit. So you're gonna get higher velocity, whatever. I don't know, man, that's, you know, that's just thinking outside the box there, putting two and two together. But nonetheless, they do seem to work. Uh, it's kind of undisputed at this viewpoint. At least I feel that way. Uh, David Bizard, Allstate Carburetor, everyone will tell you better throttle response, better atomization, all that stuff. So you see here, the Allstate one was 0 0.706 inches and the stock was 0.629 inches. That doesn't sound like a big deal. That is, I don't know, uh, less than point, point zero 0.08. But on a, little, on a little 390 at least, 
when you're dealing with a Venturi size of 0 0.1062, that 0 0.08, it, you see that difference, you see it can, it can change things. Not by much, but it can. So there you go. This is the kit. You get a number one bit and a number two bit. And you get the, the big blue guy is the tool. Has like uh, four nubs. I can't really see it in that picture, but four nubs that screw on to those little brass nuts, right? That hold the boosters in. Number one, you can see here. This is the number one bit. You can kind of see how the shape is. The same uh, chamfer. And that's what you use to drill it out basically get the shape and then number two is to get the further shape for the actual chamfer and then to the square edge so here i have my four by four and you know napkin on it put my carb on it taking it apart i just kind of sped through this because i mean i don't i don't know um to get out the old boosters i use the the number one bit and that kind of, uh, I mean, you're going to use number one bit anyhow, and the, the old boosters are aluminum, so they're soft. So you just keep on going. They're kind of pressed in there. So I suppose what they do at the factory is they look exactly like these, except for when they, they put them into the hole. They have something that holds the booster in place. And then another thing that goes in and kind of spreads out. And then, uh, so they're compressioned in there. The punch I used is a 3.88 millimeter, uh, also a, a, it's 0 0.153, and that's the punch I used because that's what I had laying around. <laughs> and the punch does not go to the, the full size of the hole, so to speak. It goes, I, I punched it from the inside of the booster. You can see that little ring in there. So if you have a punch that's like the same size as the booster leg, so I'll call it the leg, um, the booster leg, you don't want to use that. You want to use something that punches from the inside, right? And so drill it and then just slightly tap it out. Don't go ham on it. Um, now we'll say in the instructions from Allstate, you're supposed to use a press. I didn't use a press, but I, I do this a lot at work. Um, but what I do, so I'm pretty confident. My drill press, I uh, just didn't want to dig it out. I'm not going to lie. Just didn't want to dig it out. And you can actually see here the size of the annular booster compared to the stock ones. If you look carefully. And this is, you pretty much, it's going to take you a good amount of time. You don't go hog on it, especially if this is the first time doing it. You know, you take out the old boosters, you drill it, you test it, you drill it, you dry fit it, you know, you just keep on going at it. There's the, the blue tool I was talking about, how it, it lines up with the brass nuts that hold it in the back. And they only go one way. So the holes go down and the fat bottom goes down. There's a joke in there somewhere. Um... <laughs> And you'll notice on there's like a flange that keeps it square in the uh, in the carb that goes up, right? So basically, from looks, it's the opposite of what a venturi would look like, what you would think that a booster would look like. But that's the way it goes, and it can only go one way. That flange that's a little bit higher will keep you from doing it, from putting it in upside down. So here's the broken one I had, and I'll tell you how to avoid that. Basically, this is a crude drawing, but let's say that the two lines going down near the threads, that's the, it, the wall of the carb, right? And then the two lines going to the right, that's the, the hole. So the barrel on a 390 is so small that it, they barely fit in there. So if you, if you try to force it in, you'll snap the, uh, the, the threads. So what you want to do is try not to force it in. And even when they are fit in, when you're all done, and I'll go through the steps of shaving off the, the threads and all that kind of stuff, it's still a fairly tight fit. Like you got to, you got to kind of, kind of monkey around with it to get it in there. So here I try to draw where the, the lines, the, the boulder lines are the chamfer. You'll basically make more space for the threaded 
for the threads to go into and they won't snap on you because basically they have a bigger opening and a better angle to go into. If that, hopefully that makes sense. If you do this kit, you'll recognize it right away what I'm talking about. You gotta kind of drop it in and then slide it in. So again, back and forth, back and forth. So when I was drilling it for the thickness and size and the chamfering and everything, um, you'll notice this hole that is a, uh, I believe that's an air bleed for the emulsion for the, um, uh, the metering block. You'll dig in, at least I did. Uh, again, this is a 390, so it's a smaller carb than, I don't know what the 650s, the 500s, the 750s, all that stuff look like. But you'll, I, I dug into that a little bit. Um, and it's okay. I called and the guy was like, yeah, that's, it's going to happen. But the brass nuts kind of seal it all up. Um, plus you have the, that full gasket going in the back. Now, when you're done this right here, like here's an example of it not being done yet. So I had to go deeper. Now here you'll notice that the front one, sorry, it's a blurry picture, but the nut is pretty flat on there, but the actual threads still stick out. You don't want that. So then the next step is to put on the threaded nut thread keeper and get out a file and just start filing away, making it shorter. You keep the, th the keeper, you keep the nut on there so that you can unscrew it and it rethreads itself so you don't cross thread something. I am testing it, making sure it's uh, flat. It's not flat enough. So do more filing. My movies are shaking, you know, very exciting as I file and a little bit more, a little bit more drilling and you just keep going back and forth. You don't want to go crazy on it. You don't want to go too deep. You definitely don't want to blast through it. You are know, getting a new carb if that happens. Um, the other thing I did is don't put a ton of pressure on, on the, on the drill because it will sometimes catch and it just freaks you out, uh, which is probably why they say use a drill bit. But like I said, I'm used to it. I can kind of, you know, feel things through a drill. Um, I also used a clutch. So if, if it hit any snag or anything, it would, it would, you know, um, I, that was, I don't even know why I made that noise, but anyways, it would basically stop itself. Cause you know, my, uh, cordless drills have clutches. So you keep going. This right here is a, Basically, a cut off big, long flathead that I use to prime my oil system. Um, and I was redoing the bottom end of a Jeep. And I use that, just use that to make sure that they're flat. All, anyways, Allstate gives you a red thread locker. I think they do. Maybe they don't. No matter. You want some red thread locker. Um, at least that's what they suggest. To be real honest, you saw how big that nut is. It's probably not going to blast through. <laughs> if it does, you got, you got bigger issues, man. Um, <laughs> but, uh, they say use red locker. So I did, I think more so what it is, is to help seal up around there. Like I said, you're going into like the, the air bleed, uh, or whatever that little hole is. I think it's the air bleed. So maybe this red locker kind of, you know, helps seal that up, so to speak. But, um, there you go. And then, and then you're done, man. Um, and then you slap the car back on the vehicle and see if you notice a difference. So hopefully I covered it all. I'll see you guys on the next vid. Um, I think the next vid might be either adjusting my, uh, my steering stops, which obviously will be sh very short. I'll probably just put that in a short vid. Um, and or going over the uh, Offenhauser dual port, which is... Uh, still weird and that that's going to actually be kind of more of a, a nerdy scientific video cross-sectional area and i'm also going to i'm finding out ways to do low end torque measure low end torque all right so hope you enjoyed it subscribe click like thumbs up all that jazz all right guys thanks